So I initially made predictions for the F1 season a couple of months ago. At the time, we hadn't had the Barcelona shakedown or the Bahrain test and Nikita Mazepin still had an F1 seat. Now, I was aware of these things, well, maybe not the last one, and so labelled those videos pre-testing just to give myself the opportunity to panic and make some changes as well as rounding it all off in one nice, neat video. So that's what I'm doing. Hey guys, it's Taryn and welcome to the On Track channel and to my complete predictions for the 2022 F1 season. Before we get going, do make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy and subscribe for more F1 content every week with a variety of videos, I'm sure there's something you'll enjoy. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the video. In last place, I'm putting Alfa Romeo. They were ninth before, but their running and testing hasn't really filled me with confidence. They tend to be down the bottom, and I've not really seen anything that would change that. Plus a rookie in Joe that's Latifi-esque in junior performance, and I think they'll still struggle. Then in ninth, I have Williams. I was probably a little optimistic having them in sixth before, and while I think they'll be better than previous years in terms of relative pace to the rest of the grid, losing Russell will probably hurt more than I initially thought, and testing didn't quite give me the sense that they'd really found something. In 8th I have Haas, up a couple of spots from before. I think they've looked much improved but a lot of reliability issues, plus while the driver pairing is now better, it's still towards the back when compared with other teams. Plus as much as I'd like to, I just don't quite trust the team enough to move them any higher. In 7th I've still got Aston Martin. There's just something about them which makes me think they won't be climbing up the standings just yet, close to the midfield but still 7th. Testing wasn't overly amazing, but it wasn't too bad either, but I can't quite put my finger on what it is. Maybe I'm lacking confidence with them having to design the car themselves rather than just copy the Mercedes. I don't mean that in a jokey way either, so yeah, just not seeing it click for Aston just yet. Then in sixth is the Alpha Tauri car. While they've normally not done great after regulation changes, they have been a bit better the past few seasons. I can't really put them much higher as I struggle to see the junior or sister Red Bull getting close to that top team but if Gasly can maintain his performance from the last two years and Sonoda continues the way he was towards the end of last season, then I can see them hitting this mark and so sixth is my new position for them. In fifth, I've kept Alpine. I just get the sense they may end up in this strange middle ground position where they're performing better than the bottom five, but not quite at the level of the top four. Testing wasn't overly notable, which isn't a bad thing, but I'm just not quite convinced they've put together a car that'll be right near the top. In fourth is still McLaren. After Barcelona, they look really good, but then struggled in Bahrain, hence I've kept them at the same level. The other thing that for me has an impact is Ricardo missing the Bahrain test with COVID. We've seen he can take a while to get used to new cars and missing hundreds of laps of testing isn't gonna help that, which then in turn affects the team's performance. So combine that all together and I've got fourth, but maybe a little further off the top three than I had before. Next in third is Mercedes, down two spots from where I initially had them. While I definitely think they're saying the issues are much worse than they actually are, you know, they do that every year, watching the car on track compared to the Red Bull and Ferrari, it really does look much less stable, both in terms of drivability and the whole porpoising issue. I think they'll figure it out and I wouldn't be surprised if they come to the first race no miles ahead, but after comparing the teams in Bahrain testing, I'm moving them down a couple of spots. Then in second is Red Bull. In Bahrain, the car looked really good and especially Verstappen's. By the end of that test, it just seems so dialed in. It was stable on the straights and in the corners, but the thing holding me back from pipping Ferrari is two things. One, that it's Red Bull and they do whatever it takes to win the Drivers' Championship. And two, as a whole, I think the Ferrari partnership is slightly stronger, so second is where Red Bull slot in. Which means on top is Ferrari. The car looked really good in Barcelona and Bahrain, both in terms of reliability and performance. I already had them in second, so up one more spot isn't crazy. As I mentioned, I think it's just a combination of the car performance and the lineup that make me think it'll do well. So yeah, Ferrari in the top spot. Moving to the drivers, I've got Zhou Guan Yu in last place. Combine rookie with a team I don't think will do too well and no more Mazepin on the grid, it makes sense to me for him to be last. Then in 19th is Latifi. I've just yet to see him really show anything to be excited about, and with Williams not doing as well in this set predictions, I can't really justify having him much higher. There's got to be drivers at the back, and for me, he's one of them. In 18th, Bottas. Ultimately, I think he'll fall victim to Alpha not doing too well. I do think he's a capable driver, just that with the car he'll have this year, I think he'll be stuck near the back. Next in 17th, Kevin Magnussen. I'm very glad to see him return, you know, I think him, Mick Schumacher and Albon will all be relatively close in terms of their final standings, and so I wouldn't be too surprised if he ends up just a little higher than where I've put him. Then in 16th, Alex Albon. I had him much higher before, but now looking back I think that was probably already a little too high. 
But if Williams doesn't have anything too special this year, I don't think he'll be up towards the mid-pack. I think he'll do better than Latifi though, so up a couple of spots from there, and he's in 16th. Next up, Mick Schumacher. Only his second year, but I think he'll show that steady improvement we've seen in junior categories. Again, I'd probably say the last three will be fairly interchangeable, so dependent on luck and reliability, he may end up a little bit lower than this. For 14th, Yuki Tsunoda. For me, he's a really tricky one to predict. Last year was generally not great, but he did have some good moments. I don't think he'll be near the level of Gasly though, so a few places behind the Frenchman is where I'm putting him. In 13th, Sebastian Vettel. I really like Seb and really wish we could still see him at his best, but I just can't see it. I did initially have him above Stroll, but the more I think on it, the more I feel like he's going to have a year of a slow decline. Then in second is Lance Stroll, in the second Aston Martin. He's been slowly improving, but still in that region of an average driver, not the type I could see getting the absolute most out of a car, but one that would still have decent performances enough to get him 12th. In 11th is Ocon. Now, he's a driver I'm finding fairly tricky to judge and really pinpoint how I think he'll do. While he has good moments, I think the overall sort of average level is just a bit too low to have him much higher than here. Then next in 10th is Pierre Gasly. He's been really good the past few seasons and I can't see why that'll stop this year. As I mentioned earlier, I find it tricky to see the Alfa Tauri is too amazing of a car, so Pierre isn't up overly high, but I do see him still beating Sonoda, so 10th is where I've got him. Then in 9th is Daniel Ricciardo. He's a driver that I really want to put higher, and I really do want to do well, but I just can't see it at the moment. Maybe in a year or two, after time with the new cars, but for now, it's only 9th. In 8th, I've got Fernando Alonso. He had a really good return to F1 last year, and this time round I can see him being at a similar level, if not better. But sadly, I don't think the Alpine car will be in a position he really needs for a title challenge. Next in 7th is Lando Norris. After Barcelona, I really thought McLaren could be right up there, but predicting them for 4th means that Lando's only 7th. I think he'll beat Ricardo again this year and continue to improve and cement himself as a top driver, just I'm not quite seeing it as a whole for McLaren. Then in 6th, George Russell. As I mentioned before, while I wouldn't be surprised at all if Mercedes are well out in front, they just don't look at it testing. I don't mean the whole media comments on how they're behind and whatnot, but just simply it doesn't look the easiest car to drive, and so George is down two spots from where I had him before. For 5th, I have Perez. While I think the Red Bull will be very much near the top, I can still imagine them using him to benefit Verstappen, which knocks him back a bit from his teammate. Still a pretty respectable 5th place though. Next in P4, Lewis Hamilton. I had him second before, but after moving Mercedes back and Red Bull and Ferrari up, his position suffers. I think he'll come out on top over Russell, at least for the first year. Plus, if Merck are off the pace a little, I don't think it'll take them forever to get back up. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if we get to the first race and Mercedes have no issues and this is completely wrong. Then in third, I've got Carlos Sainz. I had him fifth before, but now I'm a bit more confident in the Ferrari, I can see him being closer to the top but I don't think he has the same ceiling of performance as Leclerc, which is why he's still back from his teammate. In P2, Max Verstappen, the reigning world champion. After seeing the Red Bull, and especially his laps at testing, there was just something that looked so dialed in with the pace and the stability, but I don't think it'll quite be enough to take the title again. Which means then in first, I still have Leclerc. I had him here before, and I still feel it's got a good chance of happening. There's obviously so much that can happen in a season, but ultimately if Ferrari have the car, which it looks like they may well have, then I take Leclerc out of the Ferrari drivers to win it. A few extra things I thought it would be fun to throw in. First off, the different race winners, and for 2022, I'm going with five of them, and those are Charles Leclerc, Max Verstappen, Carlos Sainz, Lewis Hamilton, and George Russell, but no Perez. With Verstappen ahead of him, I can't quite see it. I know he won in Baku last year, but so many things had to happen for that, and I can't see it for a second year in a row. Next up, the different podium finishes. I've gone with all of my top three teams, that's both Ferraris, Red Bulls, and Mercedes, plus Lando Norris, Fernando Alonso, and Pierre Gasly, just because if there are more than two teams towards the top, which hopefully there are, it'll be less likely for the midfield to pick up some here and there like we've seen in the last two seasons. And finally, how many different drivers on pole position? I'm going with six, and those are both Ferrari drivers, Max Verstappen, both Mercedes drivers, and then Lando Norris. Maybe somewhere we get a bit of a chaotic qualifying that can see him get another pole, and as for Perez, once again, I just can't see him beating Verstappen. Anyways, that is all for now. Let me know your predictions and thoughts in the comments, along with any feedback and suggestions. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more F1 content. The channel has a whole variety of stuff coming up, so I'm sure there'll be something you'll enjoy. But until next time, take care.